All right, so we only have one um, one section left to put in now, which is this push-pull um, output, NP, NP, NP. So let's wire that up. Um, this diode takes care of the VPE drop of uh, Q6, and this diode takes care of the VPE drop of Q7, so that when this transitions through zero, uh, you don't have a, a, a a break in the in the waveform it takes care of that uh, distortion so let's go ahead and put these two in and their bases get wired on opposite sides of the uh, diode pair here so it should be easy to wire in all right i've uh, put in the uh, push pull this is the npn and this is the pnp this is a uh, 2n2222 and this is a 2n2907 um, so these are fairly complementary, and I've hooked their bases up to the diodes here, and the output is both emitters. Um, over here on the input, I've discovered that um, there needs to be some input impedance to the transistors, otherwise they get too hot. Um, let me kind of describe that to you here on the schematic. Uh, where's my pen? Here's my pen. Sorry. Um, so, uh, on the input, I've put in 1K resistors to limit the uh, to limit the base current. So I found that was necessary. Otherwise, this transistor got really, really hot. Um, so right now, I have the negative input grounded. And we'll take the positive input and move it from different voltages, and we'll monitor the uh, the output, which is the center of the uh, of the two transistors. So let me try to get this all on camera. There we go. All right, let's hook up the ground to the negative here, and. My leads are all twisted up. All right. So currently we have the negative input grounded. Uh, let's make sure that's true. Yeah, it's ground. And we need to input from the positive. And positive is this. This transistor here is the 1K to the positive, and this transistor here is the uh, 1K to the negative. And I'm going to look at the output. Currently outputs at negative 10.5. And if I take the positive, I'm going to get in the way of the camera here. Ah! It's really hard to do with a camera right in front of your face. Okay, so if I take the positive and I hook it up to plus 12, you can see that it changed from minus 10 to plus 11. So the output is swinging as it should. So when the, neg when the positive input is higher than the negative input, it goes to the plus rail. And uh, here, I'll, um, anyway, you get it. it. It flips back and forth. So now we can see if the op amp acts as an op amp. So what does that mean? Uh, let's go back to the, uh, let's go back to the paper here. And so now we actually have an op amp, okay? Op amps are always drawn like this, positive, negative, and output. All right, so um, right now we have the negative grounded and we're, we're modifying the input, so it's acting like a comparator. Um, but if we do this, then it should mirror whatever the positive input is. It should send this right straight through. Uh, right now we have, like I said, uh, resistors in here. Uh, the real op amp would have that built in, I guess. Um, but let's um, let's hook up this feedback from the output to the input, and then the uh, op amp will do its job to keep these two the same. So whatever voltage is on the input, the op amp will do whatever it can to make sure that the plus and the minus are the same potential, which means that the output has to be the same potential, so that means that it's always following. So let's do that. Uh, currently, this is the negative input. And so the negative input 
we will connect to the output, which is right here. All right, and let's get the voltmeter back in camera. All right, so I'm gonna monitor the output, which is right here. Right now it's at minus, minus 12. Oh man, I'm gonna get back in the way again. And if I hit, put, put this to plus 12, ah, it goes to two and a half. That's interesting. So it's not mirroring. Now let's put it to ground. Ah, minus eight. So there's a voltage offset. So it thinks that zero is at minus eight and plus 12 is at two and a half. <laughs> That's interesting. So there's something strange going on. It's probably the mismatch of the transistors on the input. So let's see if we can get some matched transistors on the input and see if we can get this thing to operate correctly. But it is doing what it's supposed to do. If you put a, um, a sine wave into this thing, you'll probably get a sine wave, at, sine wave out of this thing. We should probably try that. Well, let's first, if we can't match those transistors, so we have uh, uh, fixed our biasing problems here. Um, but once again, when we're at ground, it thinks that's at minus 8. Positive 12, it thinks it's 2.5. And minus 12, it thinks it's at minus 12. So minus 12 works. Ground is at minus 8. So if we just add 8.5 to everything, we get 2.5 plus 8.5, pretty close to the rail. And then maybe the rail on the bottom side still stays the same. So anyway, sorry about all my fat fingers in the picture here. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and measure those two transistors that are in the differential amplifier. Okay, so if you don't have one of these, I suggest you go get one of these. So if you don't have one of these, I suggest you go get one. It's a, 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 a component tester. So we're going to pull out this transistor, shove it in here, push the button, and let's see, I need to tilt this up so you can see the display. So it says that the HFE is 173 and the voltage is 0.686. All right. We can remember those. And then we'll look at the bottom one. And the uh, the beta, the HFE, the uh, amplification of the transistor is much lower on this one. So the negative is much, uh, has more gain than the, than the other one. So let's, uh, Let's see if we can't find some matched, some matched uh, transistors or ones that are closer. Uh, let me get my get my box of transistors here, and pull some more out. All right, so these are all two n two 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 twos. They're very old because they're metal metal cans. You don't see those very often anymore, but um, they were throwing them out one day and I grabbed them. Nobody was using them anymore. Okay, oh, 173. Oh, we had one that was 173. Ah, so let's keep that one. And let's remember which one was 173. I'm sorry, that one. Okay, so these two maybe match. Let's try those two out in the circuit. Um, all right. So let me let me wire these up first. 
All right, so I've got both transistors in there that have the uh, beta of 173. And let's monitor the output. The output is at minus 10. Take the input. My finger's gonna be in the way again. We'll go to the plus rail and we get 3.3. Well, didn't fix it. And ground is at minus 8.3. So it did change a little bit, um, but certainly didn't go to zero and plus 12. So why would that be? There is an offset somewhere and a lot of op, uh, op amps back in the day, some even still, have a um, offset adjustment. Two pins that are the offset adjustment so you can actually tweak the op amp to get rid of this offset. Um, and this one does not have a tweak in it. So there must be a way to do that, which I don't know what it is. So let me investigate that a bit and uh, see if we can't fix that. But I think the next thing we should do is input a um, uh, input a signal and see if we get a signal on the output. So put a sine wave on the input and see if we get a sine wave on the output. Okay, so we have uh, the function generator set to one kilohertz. And we're outputting the signal, and uh, the signal is going to be going. Uh, uh, we'll be monitoring it here. I'm going to turn off the room light so I don't get glare. There we go. Oh, that's a glare from the outside. That's not helping too much. Let me uh, let me rotate the camera around. Uh, there we go. So we have um, the. Let's see, the purple trace is uh, the input. There's a T connection here. Is that on camera? Yeah, it's on camera. Just barely. Uh, there's a T connection here, so the function generator goes into the scope and then over to the input of the op amp. And then the uh, output is monitored with channel 1, which is in uh, yellow. So if we increase the amplitude of the... Uh, the input. There are different scales here. So we have uh, uh, five, it's really hard for me to read this. Five volt. So this is uh, uh, yellow is two volt, two volts per division and the let's see we have times one so let's put in times one so we'll read out correctly. There we go. So 200 millo 250 millivolts per division and two volts per division. So we have amplification. This is the input. This is the output. And if I crank up the input, then the output starts to clip at the bottom here. Um, otherwise, it's working pretty good. Uh, there is a... Uh, Oh, there we go. Let's take these off a little bit. So purple is input, yellow is output, and the gain is um, should there be gain? I guess there shouldn't be gain actually. Hmm. Don't know about that. Um, Let's see here. Uh, probe, oh, hit me. Probe times one. There we go. Times one. Now we are at two volts and two volts. There we go. Same, the same scale. So there's there's no gain. Uh, two volts in, two volts out. So it's about. Let's see here. If I adjust this to about here, it's about. 4 volts peak to peak, plus or minus 2, and the same on the output. And then if I increase the gain, then it starts to clip on the bottom end. And that's due to that voltage offset that we have. But if we operate the op amp within its operating range right now, um, it, does seem to be, it does seem to be working. Um, let's see if we can increase the frequency here. Let's go to Let's go to 10 kilohertz. Uh, still seems to be working at 10 kilohertz. 
100 kilohertz. Still working. Uh, megahertz. Yeah. Now it's kind of going wacky. Definitely kind of going wacky now. But up to uh, 100 kilohertz here, it's working okay. Let's go back to 10 kilohertz. That's a nice, that's a nice range. So we built an op amp. Whoa, sorry about that. We built an op amp. Um, <laughs> so I encourage you to uh, read the website that I've linked in. It was the original um, original designer of this thing, and he's got a lot of uh, words to read. <laughs> I think he talks about offsets. Um, on how to uh, correct those in this circuit, um, but in general, we've uh, we've successfully built an op amp with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven transistors, and uh, it does seem to work.